Hey there everybody! How's it going? Cody here. I want to do something a little different today. Change the mood. Change the flavor. We're gonna go Crystal Pepsi and turn this shit clear. And it's going to prove just as successful. And everybody's going to love it. Love my decision. I decided to ask my Tumblr audience, what should I make a video about? And they've left some awesome, inspiring suggestions, and we'll just get right to it. Joseph Shutter asks, drink a cup of your own piss. And I'm here to please. That's not so bad. A little tangy. Okay, tangy's not the right word. Bitter. Little bitter. <sighs> Fuck it, let's just do the whole thing at once. Suddenly, I'm not as impressed with Bear Grylls. I think I could do that show just as well. Piss ain't so bad. Protestification says, death and taxes. My grandma always said that there's only two things in life that you can't avoid, and one of them is death, and the other one is paying taxes. I don't know. Like, it happens. You know, it's just part of life. You gotta pay your fucking taxes, and you gotta die. But I'm doing my part. I'm killing myself slowly. And also... These cigarettes help pay for all the anti-smoking commercials that you see. In fact, they pay for most of them. And I'm sure most of the commercials have been made using my tax money exclusively because I smoke too much. So killing myself slowly with his song. Sadistic Yellow Bird says the public education system. I mean, what's there to really say? Honestly... I don't think that I'm the best person to be talking about the public education system because I can only show you how it's failed tremendously. Kids don't go to school to learn anything. It's just like short-term memory. Let's memorize some shit for this specific test and then let's forget it forever. And that's generally what happens. It's certainly what happened with me when I did pay attention, when I did go to school, because I've been a classic underachiever my entire life. And that's not a bragging point for me, it's just the truth. There were several times in school that I faced expulsion simply because I decided I wasn't gonna go and no force on earth could force me to do so. Seriously, there were times when my parents would come home from work, like leave work way early to take me to school. I would get out of the car and wait for them to be out of sight and I would just turn the other direction and walk right back home. Dick move on my part. But the entire learn or face the consequences aspect of the education system, it doesn't work for all people. In fact, I'd say it doesn't work for most people. And that's why we have dudes on YouTube drinking cups of their own piss. Opal Flume wants me to walk around and talk to the camera like my videos of old. Uh, specifically a video I made called April. It's surprising to me how many people have attached themselves to that. I get asked about that video still to this day. And it's been years since I made it and I don't think about it at all. In fact, there were two separate people that asked me to do this. That guy and Omar more popularly known as the paper mache dude, the guy that left the comment paper mache on every video I made for four or five years until I churned out a video from the song that he loved so much. But to be honest with you, I'm not nearly as introspective as I once was. You wanna know what my day has consisted of today, for instance? I had really bad Chinese food, and then in retrospect, I decided that that food was a really bad decision. I played some Mario for a while. Uh, Super Mario Bros. 3, if you've played this game recently, World 7 is fucking hard, right? Like, I can't get past that fucking world, no matter how hard I try. I've been trying for three days now, and I can't get past the fucking level. Talking about it, I now realize why I don't play games, because it makes me really unmotivated. And that's all I want to do, and in the background, I've had old WWF wrestling matches in the background because for some reason I've been on a fucking huge nostalgia kick lately. If it's not WWF, I've been listening to fucking Limp Biscuit, for instance. I don't know why. I don't know why I've been listening to Limp Biscuit. Like I can hear it and I know that this is garbage, 
but it's like comfort food or something. And I admit that it's a little strange that I've been on a nostalgia kick, but I'm not really all that introspective, because usually they go hand in hand. But I've just been indulging myself lately. So I can't walk around and have some introspection because I'm not feeling that way particularly right now. And also, it's nighttime as shit outside and it would look like this. <sighs> Life is pain, brah. Life hurts, brah. Apparently, it's big news right now that the YouTube sensation Fred is in fact a gay man. And in other news, water is wet. I don't know if you knew either one of those things, but they're both true. Fred likes penis, and water is a little damp. I'm just really uninterested in my own musings these days. I don't know what it is, but I've been distracting myself a lot. It's been a lot more fun for me to just... Did you just fart? Yep. Cat just farted. If it was private, you wouldn't have done it. I hope, I hope the mic picked it up. I hope the mic picked it up. I will boost that sound 20 times. I'll make a drum sound out of that fart and use it in my next song. Be like boom, 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 boom. So every time I ask people for questions, somebody inevitably asks me about drug experiences and I tend to stay away from them because I don't really do drugs anymore and when I talk about them sometimes it kind of gives me an itch to do them. So I tend to just avoid the conversation altogether and plus Drug talk is so fucking boring. Everyone has the same goddamn story over and over and over again. And I'm not going to give you any new light on what I'm about to talk about. But since people keep asking me, I thought I'd just go ahead and do it. The drug we're going to talk about is DMT and my one isolated experience with it. I went to Chicago to visit a friend of mine and that friend ended up ditching me. So I was stuck in Chicago with no money and nothing to do. Uh, well, I guess I can't say no money. I had about 20 bucks, and I noticed a hookah bar down the road, so I thought I'll go to the hookah bar, because surely there's going to be some people there that I can talk to at least. I have about 24 hours to kill until the next train comes, so fuck it, I'll go there. I found this table of people that all looked like they did drugs, and honestly, those are just my kind of people. I don't know why, maybe it's just because I grew up around drug addicts or something, but I can talk to a drug addict almost all the time and it's easy for me. I don't feel like there's a lot of judgment going on. It's like they accept what I'm about to say and I'll accept what they're gonna say. And honestly, drug addicts are some of the most interesting people you're ever gonna meet. So, I went and sat down next to them. And sure enough, after you know they passed the hookah around, I didn't actually smoke any of the hookah because I don't fucking like it. It gives me a headache and I always worry I'm gonna pass out taking it. That might seem a little weird, but if you've ever been to a hookah bar, You've certainly seen someone pass the fuck out from smoking way too much of it all at once and they fucking pass out. And I don't like passing out, so I stayed away from it. But sure enough, after one round of the, you know, the hookah pipe going around, someone says the obvious. Man, this would be way better if it was full of bud. Bud being a slang term for marijuana. And much to everybody's surprise, two or three people said, Hey, I got weed outside. You want to go smoke some, guys? To a bunch of fucking strangers. They all got up and left me sitting there by myself. I'm like, God damn it. I can't catch a break. People are just ditching me left and right. Even people I don't know are ditching my ass today. And then someone turns around and said, Hey, man, come on with us. Come on. So I'm like, Thank you. At least I can smoke. So I went outside and we all gather around this truck in an alleyway and they're passing around stuff, packing different bowls or whatever. And this big group turns into two or three little groups of, you know, like there's a conversation over here about music I don't enjoy and there's a conversation over here about movies I've never seen. And then there's another conversation where people are talking about philosophy. And since I am a douchebag, pretentious son of a bitch, I'm like, hey, that sounds fun. Let me go hear some of their philosophies that they have. I don't remember any of them, by the way. But they're passing this bowl around, and I'm talking and hitting it or whatever, and this guy keeps telling me, stop hitting it so hard. Stop hitting it so hard. Stop hitting it so hard. And I thought it was just because he was trying to conserve. He didn't want to pack another one. And I was like, fuck this. I don't know this motherfucker. I was a douche about it, and I was just like, fuck it. And then he tells me something. He's like, look, man. I dipped this stuff in DMT. I'm a chemistry student at Chicago, and I've dipped this in DMT. You need to sit the fuck down because you're about to have a trip. And I just give him one of these looks. 
Hopefully implying, are you fucking kidding me, dude? You couldn't tell me beforehand? I didn't even know you could dip weed in DMT. I knew you could dip it in, like, uh, embalming fluid, which has also happened to me before, and that shit was crazy enough, but nothing like what I was about to experience. Somehow, I made it back to the train station about a block away before it started to hit me, and I sat down in a Pizza Hut Express that they had in the station. A lot of people say that DMT DMT is supposed to hit you automatically and directly, but that wasn't the case. It took two or three minutes, maybe five or six minutes before I started to feel anything. And I'm sitting there just waiting, knowing I'm about to have some world altering experience, something that just challenges my perception of the fucking universe. And I'm sweating a little bit and freaking out because I'd never experienced this before, wasn't expecting to experience it, and I was in a very uncomfortable setting around a ton of strangers, which if you don't know, that's the worst possible scenario you can have if you're going to do a hallucinogenic drug. You should always be in a comfortable spot that you're familiar with. Instead, I'm sitting in a fucking Pizza Hut Express with like 10 bucks, and I'm fidgeting and I'm like what the fuck's gonna happen what's going on suddenly I look over and we're right next to train tracks and I keep seeing this thing bouncing in and out of frame right like this kind of like a like a little bunny it looked like and I'm like man suddenly I'm not thinking about the fact that I was dosed with DMT I'm just noticing this little cute little creature bounce up and down I'm thinking man I hope that motherfucker gets out of there before a train comes I don't want to see a little bunny die Turns out it wasn't a bunny. I was seeing a fucking rat. I don't know if the rat was real or not, but I do know that something happened that ended up triggering a whole plethora of different experiences for me when the rat popped up out of the fucking train tracks and went, shh, don't tell anybody, and then darted the fuck away. And I was like, oh my fucking God! Scared the living shit out of me. When I was a kid, I was terrified of Chuck E. Cheese and I never knew why, he just scared the shit out of me. And I realized it in that moment, it's because rats that have animated features are fucking terrifying. Suddenly, I just dissolve. I lose all sense of spirit and self, and I'm sitting there in a daze, probably like this, with drool hanging out of my mouth. This is where it's gonna start to get a little fucking weird. Suddenly, it seemed like my conscious brain and my subconscious were detached and talking to one another as two separate entities. And there was this third party being whatever the fuck my spirit is, listening to the two people conversing in my head. And my subconscious was saying very profound things. Like, don't worry about anything. Nothing is real. Nothing exists as you think it does. So just go along with it. Enjoy the fucking ride. And the conscious part of my brain was really upset about that. And he was saying, fuck you. If this isn't real, then how do I have a spirit? How do I have a soul? What is this? What am I doing? Why the fuck was I born, bruh? My subconscious didn't have an answer for that, and all of a sudden, I lost my ego. I lost my soul or my spirit. Whatever the fuck the illusion is, it went the fuck away, and I was floating in space with all these weird shapes and stars and comets coming at me in all different fucking directions. The trip probably lasted a half hour, but I swear to God, I had 10 lifetimes in that half hour. I could never explain to you all the things I experienced in that short window of time because it stretched. It's like time slowed down to merely this faint vibration, and I was existing vicariously through all these different forms. It's pretty fucked up, right? Like, they, it wasn't even, like, human. It was, like... It's hard, like I said, it's impossible to explain. It was like, like clusters of cells. And before I came down, I had this realization that I was my own universe. Because in the end, whatever this is matters to all the organic compounds operating within my body. All the synapses going off and neurons firing. And my perception of time from then on has been very fucked up. Either a day feels like it's dragging on, like, to an infinity, or it feels like I'm waking up and sleeping, waking up and sleeping in such short bursts, like going a week is nothing, a month is nothing, thinking a year ahead is nothing, and before that was impossible to me. Once I was sober again and sitting inside of that Pizza Hut Express, something happened to me and... 
After doing a little bit of research, I found out that I had experienced something that is known as ego death. I didn't feel like I had any spirit or any semblance of self. Like I was just as sentient as a tree or something. It's really hard to explain, but for the better part of a year after that, I felt as if I was lacking a soul. And I know that soul is one of those words that you know if you are intellectual at all, you know that it's not a real thing, but you like to bask in the delusion. But for a long time after the fact, I couldn't bask in it anymore. I just felt like nothing I had ever experienced was real. Even though I had memories of them, every time I thought about those memories, they became more distorted. And everything I thought was real wasn't the way that I thought that it was. And since that was the case, how do I know for sure that it ever really happened to begin with? That's not to say that DMT was a negative experience altogether, because even saying all that, even going through the ego death, I think it was a positive experience. I was struggling with alcoholism pretty bad. And I really haven't drank at all since I did DMT. I haven't had the desire to at all. Something happened and there have been studies to prove that sometimes hallucinogenic drugs help people that are struggling with addiction. I was drinking a fifth of Jack Daniels whiskey every night of my life until I puked myself to sleep quite literally. It was the most depressing, pathetic thing you'd ever, you'd ever experience in your life or you'd ever see in your life. It was like one of those fucking cheesy soap operas. Like, I had hit rock bottom. was like, bleh, fuck it, bleh, bleh. And then suddenly after I did DMT, I was like, why am I poisoning myself every single fucking night? The idea of getting drunk now kind of makes me nauseated. And some way, like, even talking about it's kind of making me nauseated. I've thought about maybe doing it again in my life to try to quit other things, like smoking cigarettes, for instance, which I'm having a really fucking hard time kicking. But it's not like you can go in there with a mission and hope to come out of it with that. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't take DMT even intentionally, but I didn't expect that it was gonna cure my fucking alcoholism. Not by a long shot. It would be very selfish of me to be like, I can take this and it's gonna be a magic cure and I'll never wanna smoke cigarettes again. But it's something I've tossed around in my head a couple times. When I was living in Kalamazoo, apparently it's really easy to get DMT up there. A lot of people told me how easy it was to get it and they could get it for me if I wanted it. Uh, but I never really took them up on their offer because to be honest with you, DMT is the only drug that fucking terrifies me. It scares me to death. I've taken shrooms more times than I can count, and I, you know, I've had positive shroom experiences and really negative shrooms experiences. Uh, that doesn't scare me. No other hallucinogenic drug scares me except that one. But I don't really do drugs at all anymore. So, I think those days are about over anyhow. I've experienced what I needed to experience. I had my bottoming out, if you will. And I don't want the monkey back on my back. So I kind of stay away from people that do a lot of drugs. I don't talk to drug addicts anymore, even though they're interesting, because the problem with that is if you have struggled with addiction and you continue to associate yourself with drug addicts, inevitably they will offer you drugs. And it's a lot easier to say, I'm not gonna do drugs when it's not like under your nose. When someone's like, here, fucking have some of this. And it's like right under your face. It's like, fuck, fuck, what am I gonna do? No, no, you don't want to. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And then you're back on the fucking wagon again. So I stay away from it. But there's my DMT experience. Hopefully you guys can stop fucking asking me every video. Have you done DMT? What about LSD? What about shrooms? What do you think of this? People glorify drug usage and condemn it the same way that they do sex. And I think that's really interesting because neither one is as awesome as people make it out to be. And it's not as bad as people make it out to be either. It's when you overindulge yourself on either one that it starts to become a problem. But you can recreationally do drugs and it'd be fine. I know people that have done coke and stuff like that off and on for 25, 30 years. And they're not addicted to it. They'll do it one day out of like... I don't know, maybe once every three months, and they're fine.
they don't go back to it they don't have the have the itch to do more coke it's just something they do once in a while same thing with weed same thing with booze and pills or anything else you can get your grubby little fingers on unfortunately when you're a person like me there's no such thing as recreation if you enjoy it when you're me you indulge yourself on it until it is way worse than just a little problem it consumes every ounce of you and then it's hard to get the fuck out of it. Because I know that about myself, I stay away. And it works for me. It's been working for me anyway. Of course, the next question that I see is from the Bowser and he says, First time smoking weed! <clears throat> so I guess this is the drug video. Drinking pee and DMT. Throw it in with a little bit of weed. Here's something kind of funny. I never touched any drug at all until I was 18 years old. Never touched booze. Never touched weed, nothing. I was what you would call straight edge, though I didn't identify myself as such because I think straight edge people are fucking annoying as hell and I hate them. I hate the idea of straight edge, how you're, how you're superior to people because you don't do drugs and you don't have sex, you don't eat meat, so you're really fucking boring as a person and somehow that makes you superior somehow. Anyway, I was one of those fuckheads, uh, not in the fact that I condemned people for doing it, I just didn't do it myself, and I certainly had a lot of sex, and I certainly ate a lot of meat, as you could probably tell if you knew me back then because I was pushing 300 pounds, I really liked fucking eating steak and shit like that. Wasn't giving that up for nothing. The first time I ever smoked weed was when I was a pizza boy at a gas station. I knew a guy that I was working with there and he sold weed to people and I would see him talking to people about Bud all the time and uh, I was going through this weird crisis where I was like I gotta try something, I gotta do something new and the girl that I was dating at the time was having the same crisis and she was like man maybe we should just you know smoke some weed sometime and she said it thinking I was gonna judge her and be like no and instead I was like okay and when I was at work I bought like ten dollars worth of weed or something and I came home and I was like oh, hey I got some weed do you want to smoke it and uh, I quickly realized that I had nothing to smoke out of so I went back to the store and I bought an apple and I googled how to make an apple pipe and I made my apple pipe or whatever and finally we go out to a van for some reason uh, I think we were already paranoid about doing it in our apartment because we were afraid our neighbors were gonna smell it and call the cops or something so we go out to this van that my friend had and we're passing it around or whatever and my girlfriend hated it. She, not the girl I'm dating now, the girl I was dating then, absolutely hated it. It made her paranoid and sweaty and she just didn't like it at all. But more than the fact that she hated it, she hated how much I loved it. I just thought I was on cloud fucking nine, like I had discovered my drug. Like, this is what I should have been doing my whole life. I could have easily got through high school with this. Where the fuck have I been the last 18 years of my life? I should have been doing this every fucking day. She didn't like that too much. She's like, you're not going to be one of those potheads, burnout junkies. I remember her saying that specifically to me. And I was thinking to myself, fuck you, yeah, I am. That's what I want to be. I want to be like Mike, except with weed instead of basketball. So fast forward a few months. I didn't smoke for a while because I was kind of trying to listen to my girlfriend and be like, you know, a good a good guy, a good boyfriend. And if she if she had a problem with it, then I had to have a problem with it too. So I bit my lip and I tried to forget it. But that relationship ended and then all of a sudden I was by myself a lot of the time. And what do you do when you're by yourself except smoke bud and watch old cartoons? So that's what I did. I just smoked and smoked and smoked and smoked. And that's how it was for about eight or nine years. I just smoked weed and smoked a lot of it. Probably earned some drug dealer somewhere tens of thousands of dollars. The amount of weed that I smoked in my life. Dude, where's my office? I totally lost it. Cause I was half baked, smoking doobies. Doobie brothers, I was smoking doobies with my brothers. It makes the dullest human being interesting and artistic. It's not going to stay illegal for very much longer, you know, in relative terms. I'll see it staying illegal on a state level for another 20 years, on a federal level for another 30, but certainly no longer than that. That was more of my 
opinion of weed as a drug more than my first experience, but you did hear my first experience there. I did say it. It was in that little diatribe. Semlin95 asks, make a video talking about your time in school and if any teacher had any sort of impact on you. I went to a really small school and all of my teachers for the most part were backwards thinking hillbillies. Uh, I didn't get along with any of them because none of my teachers were really progressive. When I hit high school, I had a science teacher named Miss Cook, and she was fucking awesome. She was really nice to me, and she was more of like a college teacher than a high school teacher. If I didn't want to listen to the lesson, she wouldn't send me out of class. She would say, hey, just fucking sleep. Now, she wouldn't say it like that. She'd say, hey, just sleep if you want to. I'm not going to tell you not to, but it's on you when you fail the class. And that actually made me want to do work more because I wasn't threatened with this bullshit punishment. I don't respond well to authority. I never have. I had an English teacher in high school too and her name was Mrs. Dione and she was probably the best teacher I ever had. Um, she really enjoyed my writing and she would set up class projects around me a lot of the time and she put me off in, like you know how you had to do group work and stuff? She would put me in groups with people that were also like-minded individuals and she would make one of the options, like you get four options, you could you know, just write a different recreation of a story, uh, but toward the fourth one it was always you could make a movie about the story and you could have your own designations and you could take the story in different routes if you wanted to. And that was right down my alley because I had a film group and I loved making movies in high school, that's what I did for fun. And she didn't have to do that, but she made these projects specifically so I could pass her class because she knew that I had a real passion and she wanted to help that. That's the way teachers should be, but instead I just had a bunch of fucking should-be cops that just wanted to bully kids besides her. Uh, one time and specifically, we had this story called The Interlopers. I don't know if you've read the story, but it's about these two people that get trapped under a tree and they're going to get eaten by wolves if they can't come to a consensus to get out of the situation and they're like enemies. I didn't have access to wolves, so instead I thought it would be awesome if these two people were strapped to a tree, under a tree, and it was all just like a setup from one of these people to get a land deed from, this, from the other guy. And the end of the movie has a guy shooting someone in the head and he's hanging off a tree like this with blood leaking out of his head which you could imagine would probably raise some red flags in a fucking small town school where I was already like on all the watch lists or whatever I had already gotten in trouble for things like this in the past but that teacher stood by it and she said hey look I if, you're, if anyone's gonna get in trouble for this it's gotta be me because my principal saw the video and wanted to suspend me from school uh, the, my teacher was like, no, because I gave him the option to do this. He just did the assignment the way I told him he could. So he should not be in trouble for this. And the principal's like, look, this is a problem. Like, he's, he's kind of messed up in the head if he's thinking this way. And she's like, no, he just, this is his take on the story. Like, it's, look past it, you know. Some people like stuff like this, and he's just one of those kids. And then she ended up getting in trouble because she gave me an A-, minus, and he wanted her to give me an F and fail the class so I couldn't take it anymore. And you know, most teachers at that point would just stop having these projects. But she didn't. Every month there was a new project and one of the options was always make a movie. And every time I made a movie. And that was the only class in high school that I had straight A's in until I left school because she was an awesome teacher. I always think about sending her a message on Facebook or something and telling her, look, thank you for being awesome to me when no one else was uh, but I always think it'd be awkward so I never do but she was an awesome teacher anyway this video is probably ending at about a half hour in length so I couldn't do all the things you guys suggested but I did a lot of them so on to the editing booth Woo! become my patron do it down below in fact we're gonna top it out at 40 minutes because I don't see you clicking buttons to the Patreon page. Patreon. It sucks that the website is called Patreon and then if you pledge to me, you're a patron because I always mix the words up. Patreon.com, 
pledge, become my patron. Every dollar helps, every penny helps, but really if you pledge a penny, that's kind of crappy. I gotta make a hundred videos to get a dollar. Oh well, beggars can't be choosers. E-beggars can't be E-choosers. Bye.